Hey guys, Sam Miller from Panel Precision. Welcome back to Straight Talk. Okay, in this episode of Straight Talk, we're going to go over the differences between COAL, which is cartridge overall length, and CBTO, which is cartridge base to ogive. Okay, this stems from an email that I got from a guy who was asking uh, why, if he's using one particular 180 grain bullet, can't he just load it to the same length as any other 180 grain bullet? And I think he was working on a 300 Win Mag. The reason is, is because there's a lot of different shapes of those 180 grain bullets. So it's important to understand the difference between CBTO and COAL. COAL is literally the cartridge overall length. So it's from the base of the cartridge to the tip of the bullet, the maximum length of a loaded round. CBTO is cartridge based ogive. So what we do is we measure from the base of the, of the case here to the end of the ogive. The ogive is the curved shape of the bullet and where the ogive ends and turns into a bearing surface, which is the full diameter of the bullet, that's where we measure two, is right where those two things intersect. And the reason that's important is because that's also where the bullet first contacts the lands in your barrel. So uh, we use that as, a, as an accuracy tool so that we can tune the seating depth properly. Not only that, we use that as, as a, a location to measure our seating depth in all of our loaded rounds so that we can make them all identical, which is important for getting low ES and good accuracy on target. Okay, I have a few videos on the channel already that show how to measure your CBTO using a modified case in your barrel and then using a comparator with a bullet insert on your calipers. Uh, I'll just go over really quick why you can't really use cartridge overall length even if you didn't touch anything after you set up the dies. Uh, the, the bullet tips, if you're going to check Say I'm going to load this block of ammo to the same cartridge overall length. So I start, I set up my die, I put the, the first round to exactly the overall length that I want, and then I start loading rounds. I lock the die in place and I just start loading rounds. But every now and then I pull my caliper out and I start checking lengths. Well, those lengths are generally going to be all over the place. You might have several of them that are exactly the same, and then you might have one that's five or 6,000 shorter. That's normal when you measure cartridge overall length and your first reaction is going to be adjust your die to make them all the same. The problem is, is that you don't really need the cartridge overall length to all be exactly the same. You only need cartridge overall length to give you clearance in a magazine. So the number that we really want to focus on is CBTO because that is where the bullet will first contact the lands when you fire the round. So we want all those to be exactly the same. And you can have that entire block of cases there with a perfect CBTO, so absolutely no variance at all, and still have three to four to five thousandths difference across the overall length of those rounds. So uh, that's why I don't use COAL. Uh, not only that, but it doesn't really tell you anything about what the length is of your rounds in, in relation to the lands, so you don't know how far that round is jumping before it hits the lands. It's just not a good, effective measurement when you're trying to build precision ammo. And for the record, that, that applies to plastic tip bullets as well as the open tip match bullets. Uh, the open tip match bullets, you look at them, they look all nasty at the tip. Uh, they're pretty close. They're a lot closer than you'd think they'd be. And then the plastic tip bullets like this Hornady ELD, you'd think they'd all be exactly the same, but they're not. And, you know, these differences aren't very much and they don't really affect accuracy because they're out here on the tip of the nose where it doesn't really matter anything. But the... The CBTO can be exactly perfect and you can still be off on your overall length. Now I had the unique opportunity uh, during this load development series that I have running now for my 260 to load up nine different 140 grain class bullets and shoot them over my chronograph just to see what the velocity difference would be um, you know, across that broad range of bullets. So what I did when I was loading them up is I loaded all of them to exactly the same CBTO. So all nine rounds, all nine different bullets five rounds each in these strings, so 45 rounds were loaded right to, to the same CBTO measurement. And while I was doing that, I wrote down what the overall length of, of the round was so that I could compare them. So I made a chart. We'll go check that out real quick. I don't really need to narrate this much. It kind of speaks for itself. This is for my 260 Remington. These are the rounds that I loaded up for my big 140 grain velocity test. Uh, my cartridge-based ogive length on all of them was 2.040, which is 10 thousandths off the lands in my barrel. Uh, the SAMI cartridge overall length specifies 2.800. So if you look down this line, 
This is the cartridge overall length for every one of those bullets when I had them seated at 2.040 cartridge based ogive. So you see all the different lengths there. Good luck trying to match any of those up. In fact, if you went with your SAMI cartridge overall length and 140 grain SMK and you seated at 2.800, you're going to be a little over a hundred thousandths deeper into the lands. So we would be jamming it almost a hundred thousandths into the lands. So you can see why that's not only uh, it's not only good for accuracy or ES or anything like that or reliability. It's it can also be dangerous. So it's important to understand the difference between your cartridge-based ogive and COAL. All right, pretty interesting, huh? That was a lot of different bullets and a lot of different lengths. But uh, anyway, you know those are 140 grain class bullets. So if you think about all the bullets that are available for 6.5 cartridges, uh, not just 260, but 6.5s in general, and then you look at the SAMI cartridge overall length spec for a 260 Remington, which is 2.800, imagine how much difference there's going to be between a 120 grain bullet, 130 grain bullet, and 140 grain bullet. As far as the, the total length of that round, the, the intrusion into the case, and then the, the CBTO. So your, your, if your CBTO on your 130 grain bullet is right on the lands and then you load up a 140 grain bullet right on the lands that 140 grain bullet has to make up the weight somewhere and it's generally split between the front and the back so the nose on that 140 grain bullet is going to be quite a bit longer so if you take a 140 grain load cartridge overall length and then duplicate that with a 130 grain bullet you're going to be jammed into the lands guaranteed because that 130 grain bullet's going to have to seat out way further in the nose to make up that difference between the heavier bullet and the lighter bullet. So you can't just do that. You cannot just go off cartridge overall length without at least knowing the difference between the two nose lengths and where your land starts. So, uh, you know, this might sound complicated, but I would just tell you, ignore cartridge overall length, figure out where your lands are, and start using CBTO. It'll make life a lot easier. Okay, so some of those measurements are available either online, you can go right to the bullet manufacturer or the powder manufacturer, or look in your load books for the cartridge overall length. And then once you know what that is and you start measuring with your uh, modified case and all that stuff, you'll get a better understanding of, of how all this works and why you can't just use cartridge overall length. But just for a couple of examples here, uh, Hornady online has load data for the 147 grain ELDM, and they list the cartridge overall length for that at 2.785. So you can see my, my loaded round was quite a bit different than their loaded round. Uh, the Hodgdon load data, I don't have a nozzle partition, but the only one they listed online was 140 grain nozzle partition. They're calling that a cartridge overall length of 2.780. And then you come into the Sierra load book, I actually have the Sierra load book. Both of those bullets, so the 140 grain and the 142 grain, SMKs and they're completely different bullets with different nose profiles, different ballistic coefficients. They list both of those if you're going to load off their load data at 2.765 cartridge overall length. So you can see <laughs> you would have a completely different jump to lands if you loaded both of those bullets at that length. So, uh, you know, it's just not a good measurement to use. Berger, they list all of their 6.5 bullets in their load manual at 2.800 as the cartridge overall length. Uh, you know, the proof's in the pudding. If you just look at all those different numbers and think you have to load every single round to the same length with all the different nose profiles, all the different weights of bullets, all the different uh, BCs, everything, you can see it just wouldn't work well. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for more episodes of my load development series. We'll go over all these different tests I did on these 140 grain bullets. Until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.